10 young men are facing charges for hazing after a pledge died at a party last month. His blood alcohol level was a shocking 0.49. 10 young men under arrest in the suspected hazing death of a college student in Louisiana. Tonight, a major new development in the alleged hazing death of Penn State student Timothy Two Piazza. Florida State University students from the Bay Area will spend time in jail for a, the hazing death of a fraternity oh. pledge. Consumption of alcohol is a significant factor in over 90% of all insurance claims. Millions of dollars are spent each year defending and settling litigation arising from the failure of fraternity men. International fraternities, through their insurance carriers, will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on litigation expenses. Those brothers involved as defendants have trouble balancing classwork and other responsibilities with the time and emotional trauma caused by the litigation proceedings. There is never enough money to compensate a family for the death or a life-altering injury of their son or daughter. The litigation is often the result of undergraduate brothers who selfishly choose to violate local, state, and federal law. Those brothers who fail to uphold and enforce our health and safety policies are men who did not take seriously the obligations they assumed when signing the bond in our initiation ritual. Florida State University has just banned every single fraternity and sorority Here, on its Greek campus. Here, a major American university is suspended following the death of a fraternity Our faculty is proposing a ban on all fraternities and sororities. The Ohio State University campus is still reeling after the school's preemptive ban on all fraternities. A new bill would ban Greek life at Tennessee Public Schools. Do you schools. think this yep. organization should continue or be uh, sent the way of the dodo? I think it should, it should be done. So either you heal as a team or you die as individuals. Since 1848, Phi Delta Theta has been a bold and transformative leader in North American higher education. We should be very proud of our illustrious past and the many members who have honed their leadership skills in their chapters on the way to becoming influential and successful change agents all over the world. While we celebrate all we have accomplished, we must be ever mindful of our duty to uphold our founder, Robert Morrison's famous quote, to do what ought to be done, but would not have been done, unless I did it, I thought to be my duty. Phi Delta Theta is a values-based leadership society of men. This means we are responsible for holding ourselves and others accountable to the organization's values. However, adhering to these values can be challenging as we are vulnerable to peer pressure and many of us are away from home for the first time. In this environment, some of our members may participate in risky behavior, including testing limits on alcohol and drug use. Additionally, negative behaviors and attitudes about women, sex, and unrealistic standards of masculinity may be accepted or even glorified. A new era of accountability is now upon us, specifically, it questions the very existence of Greek organizations and the future viability to survive and excel. The fraternal movement is grappling with the contradiction of morals and values espoused by Greek organizations and the on-the-ground reality of hazing, misuse of alcohol and substances, and lack of accountability and self-governance. We must continue to evolve to meet these challenges and live our cardinal principles every day. Phi Delta Theta has an awesome responsibility to rise to the occasion like we have done so many other times, to be courageous trendsetters, willing and able to challenge the status quo, and lead from out in front. In this video, you will learn about bystander intervention, your duty to protect your brothers, and examples of how you can intervene in a safe manner. After the video, a dedicated staff member or volunteer will help to facilitate a discussion that will provide opportunities for you to practice and build the necessary skills to be a pro-social bystander. Thank you for being present and actively participating in this important program. I'm Matt Edwards, bond number 2375. I'm here to talk about how each of us can step in and help a situation that could end up very bad. In this video, we're gonna talk about bystander intervention, how you can help, and why it's important for you to get involved. The four major topics we're gonna to discuss today include sexual misconduct, misuse of alcohol, emotional distress, and hazing. Bystander intervention is stepping in when you know something's wrong. It doesn't sound hard, but there are a lot of reasons why people don't step up in the situations we're gonna look at. They don't want to get involved in something that isn't their business. They don't feel like they can help. 
They believe someone else will take action. They feel embarrassed or don't want to be seen as a troublemaker. They fear social repercussions as damaging relationships. And they fear some form of retaliation. There are a lot of reasons why you might not step in. But there's also a few really good reasons why you should. Findings from the 2017 Fidel to Theta Bystander Intervention International Survey indicate members have a solid foundation of sexual and relationship violence knowledge, positive attitudes that support sexual consent and respectful intimate relationships, and overall willingness and confidence to intervene as a bystander. 67% of members indicate that they have discussed sexual misconduct with other FIDELT members. FIDELT members have high levels of knowledge of the meaning of sexual consent. Members indicate that they've engaged in a number of bystander behaviors. As FIDELTs, we must always be our brother's keeper, committed to understanding when a situation is potentially dangerous and needs our help. It's in our DNA to be responsive. However, it's important we continue to build skills and think about how we would handle specific issues in a safe and proactive manner. Now we're going to look at some common situations where bystander intervention can prevent some serious problems. Sexual misconduct is a term that covers a wide variety of behaviors, from rape to sexual harassment to stalking and so on. The situation we're going to look at is probably pretty familiar to you. At a party, a guy and a girl have been drinking and they hook up. Happens all the time, right? But let's take a closer look at what's going on. It's not hard to see that this situation could go the wrong direction. Even at a glance, it's clear that this girl is too drunk to stand, and there's no way she could really consent to having sex with the guy who's trying to get with her. It's obvious she's not comfortable with what's happening, but because she's been drinking, she's not in any position to stop things herself. Now let's take a look at the same situation, but with someone who decides to step in. By having greater awareness of your social surroundings, you could potentially protect a brother from an irreversible mistake. Instead of sitting on the sidelines, be the one who takes action. Protect someone from throwing everything away. If they're a true brother, they'll thank you for watching out for them instead of getting upset. There's a couple things to take away from how this bystander handled the situation. First of all, when he intervened, he didn't do it alone. When you're confronting someone who's drunk, it's good to have other people with you. Sexual misconduct gets a lot of media attention, and even the situation as simple as we just saw can have a lot of consequences. For example, in 2016, after rape accusations were made against two members of a fraternity at the College of Charleston, the national headquarters of their fraternity revoked the charter for their chapter on that campus, and the College of Charleston president issued a ban on all alcohol consumption at all fraternity and sorority social events in the college. Even though the situation we just showed is pretty common, it's not the only situation where someone can suffer from sexual misconduct. It's important for us to take this seriously and intervene when we think we should. That was a hell of a night, fellas. It was a crazy party. All right, well, let's get right to it. She had a banging bod, right? I have to say. Oh, boom, boom. Look at this video I have of you two. You're grinding all over here. That was just the beginning though, bro. There's way more where that came from. You want to see a real video? Check this out, bro. Uh... <laughs> she was DTF, bro. It was fun for a couple minutes until she got tired. I wore it out. Man, I bet you lasted only, what, two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I could have gone all night, but I wanted her to get a rest though. I was hammered and tired too. Dude, I woke up in the morning and she was gone. I thought I had dreamt of the hookup, but then I remembered she forgot her panties at my place. <laughs> <laughs> then about that snap. <laughs> Does that mean another hookup? Shoot, only if she's trashed again. <laughs> <laughs> There's always another Tom and another woman. <laughs> That was not cool, man. Yeah, I've always thought the dude was a jerk, but this potentially could be bad for him and the chapter. I mean, yeah, you're right, but 
Is it really our job to do anything about it? I mean, it's not like we saw anything happen. Oh, you mean the potential rape? That woman was passed out. I feel like we gotta do something. At least tell the president. I'm not comfortable with this and that was not true, brotherhood. You're right. I'm gonna talk to the president. I, I mean, I was his pledge educator and I did help recruit him. I just have to talk to him when he's sober. I mean, I feel like every time I talk to him, he's either drinking or partying or, or doing drugs. I'll talk to the president and I'll suggest he see a family member for guidance or, or talk to a counselor on campus. All right. I'm glad you're gonna confront him. Given I'm just a J.I., he probably wouldn't even listen to me. Let's go tell the president together. Hey, do you have a few minutes? Yeah, I have a few minutes. What's up? Uh, so, we overheard a concerning conversation uh, pertaining to one of our members, and we have reason to believe that that could have some negative implications towards our chapter and that member. Wait, what happened? Yeah, um, so Anthony was at our last party, and he was drunk. Too drunk. And he took some footage of another young woman who was also drunk, and he's been sharing it with other brothers and people outside of the fraternity. And okay, that's really bad. We need to get on this right away because this could spiral completely out of control if we're not careful. For our sake, but also for our member and for the woman involved. We need to make sure everyone comes out of this okay. So I just got back from the President's Leadership Conference. We went over step by step what to do and I never thought we'd have to use it, but luckily we got this plan. Let me bring it up really quick. Yeah, so this is what we talked about there. It goes through step by step exactly what we need to do. Do you guys feel confident that we can go through this? Think everything here is covered? Yeah, I mean, our plan was to just confront him and speak to him personally about it. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna have that conversation later on today. So we talk with the chapter advisory board and we'll set up a palace hearing. Here's the plan. I'll talk to the cab, you guys talk to Anthony, I'll get on the war on the phone, set up a palace committee. Let's sit down here in an hour and make sure that everything's going to plan, okay? Because we, we need to move swiftly on this. We need to be really responsive, but we also need to be completely transparent. In this case, stepping in after the fact was the right thing to do and models that the chapter will follow through with integrity and civility. This provides the opportunity to shift the person's perspective because it is conversational and respectful. It also provides the opportunity to use formal consequences and follow up. Zan, man. Don't worry about it. Bro, you don't need that. You've already had enough to drink. Bro! Give What's us man. this. Give us this. Hello? 911, this is an emergency? 911, what is your emergency? The consequences of alcohol is alarming. Did you know in the last year this data was reported? 1,825 college students between the ages of 18 to 24 died from alcohol-related unintentional injuries, including motor vehicle crashes. 696,000 students between the ages of 18 to 24 were assaulted by another student who had been drinking. 97,000 students between the ages of 18 to 24 experienced alcohol-related sexual assault or date rape. Roughly 20% of college students met the criteria for alcohol use disorder. 
About one in four college students reported academic consequences from drinking, including missed classes, falling behind in classes, doing poorly on exams and papers, and they also received lower grades overall. As members of Phi Delta Theta, we must look out for one another. We must be vigilant and ready to help someone in need, especially before it's too late. Emotional distress is one of the most difficult situations to identify. It can be hard to tell someone's going through a difficult time or whether they really need help. We're taught that talking about emotions isn't something men do. Because of that, men who suffer from emotional distress don't share it with anyone and don't seek help because they think it might make them look weak. There are a few signs to determine whether someone needs your help. Look for changes in behavior and routine. Some of these changes include oversleeping, overeating, alcohol and substance abuse, emotional distance, antisocial behavior, and general disinterest in things. These things are commonly connected with depression, but it may also mean that someone's stressed from school, their family, or other social pressures. If you pick up on any of these signals from your brothers, don't be afraid to intervene. Ask someone how they're doing. Talk things out. That can go a long way with someone who needs it. Every college campus has dedicated counselors to help you. So don't be afraid to ask for help or to ask on behalf of someone who needs it. Hey man, I'm just calling to let you know how lucky I am to call you my friend. We made a lot of great memories together. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Are you all right? You feeling spontaneous? Homesick? Yeah, I'm just, trying to... I'm just chilling, you know. Sharing some brotherly love with your best friend? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Cool. Hey, what do you think about this shirt, man? Do you think my little brother will like it? I mean, yeah, of course he will. But isn't it the middle of your junior year? We don't give out t-shirts until BDT senior send-off. I mean, there's something going on you want to talk about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot. What's going on? I don't know where to begin. Well, I got all night if you want to talk about it. Thanks, man. Yeah, I mean, we can even, you can talk to someone on campus. We have counseling services. I can go there with you. I can even schedule you an appointment right now. I, I don't know if I'm ready for that just yet. They'll help you sort out anything you got going on, anything you want to talk about. They can speak with you. It's confidential. Just one-on-one. -on -one. I think you're right. I'll give it a shot. All right. Cool. Let's go. Hi. Hi. I'm Kim. Harry. Hi, Harry. So what's going on? Taking charge of your health and wellness is key to being successful in college and beyond. As a member of Phi Delta Theta, you're fortunate to have a close group of chapter brothers that should be looking out for your best interest. Phi Delta Theta has a zero tolerance policy against hazing. Hazing includes any action taken intentionally or unintentionally on or off fraternity premises with or without the consent of the person subjected to the action, which produces mental or physical discomfort, embarrassment, harassment, or ridicule. These activities include paddling in any form, creation of excessive fatigue, physical and psychological shocks, quests, treasure hunts, scavenger hunts, road trips, wearing apparel in public, which is conspicuous and not normally in good taste, engaging in any public stunts and buffoonery, morally degrading or humiliating games and activities, late work sessions, and any other activities which are not consistent with fraternal law, policy, or the regulations and policies of the educational host institution.
All right, gentlemen, we just finished our calendar for next semester, and we've planned our philanthropy. Good job. Uh, Brother Fikaya Educator, do you have a report for us? Yes, I do. So in light of recent events, I feel that it's necessary to make some revisions to our Fikaya Education Program. More so, I think that we need to follow our Fikaya Educator Facilitator's Guide as it dictates. What do you all think? What did you have in mind? Well, so the first week after Rush, we typically have our drunk scavenger hunt. But maybe that's not necessarily the way we have to do things. Maybe we could do something different. But it's tradition. It's what we've always done. Plus, it builds character. It helps us weed out the weakest new members. And then, once we're deciding who deserves letters, we'll actually know. It also builds brotherhood, man. It's a shared experience. All of us are there together. I understand that. But keep in mind that we are leaders on campus. And once we start getting alcohol involved in that, things can go sideways really fast. So, I hear all of that, but once we get alcohol involved, we're jeopardizing both the safety of those other students as well as the life of our own chapter. Think about the other fight out chapters that have already had similar instances happen to them and they've gotten in trouble or kicked off campus even. And as opposed to having a drunk scavenger hunt, maybe we could partner with the rec center and have like a high-low ropes course or something of that nature. Either way, it's our duty and responsibility to benefit both ourselves as a chapter, but also the people who are interested in rushing our fraternity. Yeah, but what would the alumni think? We're going away from tradition, man. Our chapter advisory board can take care of the alumni if they have any questions about it. Once they see that we're trying to benefit FIDO for the better, they'll understand. What do y'all think? Agreed. Agreed. Any dissenting opinions? I'm sorry. All right, I think we're all agreed, gentlemen. Honestly, I completely agree with you. We're leaders on this campus, and as college men, we really owe it to ourselves, to our brothers, and to our organization to take this opportunity and make a positive change. Just because we've done it the same way for this long doesn't mean there isn't a better path. And now that we have it, I think we owe it to our members and to our brothers that we make this improvement. Let's go from here, and let's do it. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, guys. Conversation is powerful. Hazing activities damage your reputation and create a lasting scar on yourself, your chapter, your university, and may have legal consequences. Remember our cardinal principles. In this video, you learned why it's important to get involved as a proactive bystander, the challenges to intervening, and observed different scenes that safely and responsibly addressed the issues involving sexual violence, misuse and abuse of alcohol and drugs, emotional distress, and hazing intervention. In closing, I challenge you to think about something in this video that's resonated with you. Maybe it's a similar situation you've observed or heard about. How would you react? And what would you do to safely intervene? Thanks for watching this video. I'm Matt Edwards, and I'm proud to be a Phi.